Hello everyone, this is uh, Daniel over here at Northwest Fighting Arts. I wanted to shoot another video today focusing on some upper body exercises that you guys can do at home. Hope everyone's doing well, stay active, staying healthy, and staying positive uh, during this time. Uh, but I wanted to get right into it and talk about some things. We are going to be covering a lot of different upper body, mainly body weight push-ups and some of the different mechanics we, we do when we're throwing punches and get a good workout in. The main punches we're focusing on today is our number one, two, and three. This is our jab, cross, and hook. And this is set up today in a lesson to go over how to warm up the body, but also even in our warm-ups, focusing on what we use in, within our body when we throw those punches, our core, and developing um, how to throw the body when a punch with the whole body rather than just snapping it with the hand and not having as much power as you normally would. So I want to cover that and I want to head right into it. Um, and uh, get started. So we're going to start off by going over some basic uh, twisting warm-ups. This is to kind of engage the core, the lower back, and get the body ready. And when I'm going to ding the bell, it's going to be three minutes. We're going to focus on working on the first exercise. So follow me. Our hands are up. Feet are shoulder width. And we're going to keep it up here. And drop the hand to swing. My front hand, whichever hand's in front, is going to tap the shoulder. The other hand is going to be behind. Twist, tap my hips, turning at the waist. This is to help build, relax the body, get the body warmed up. Prep it for our next exercise. Turn, rotate, nice and easy. Think about your rotation of your waist. Engage your core, bring the hands up, guard position, same thing now. And just like we did, I'm still turning on the balls of my feet, my heels are coming out but I'm really engaging my core. This is without any punching. You can think of this like a guard exercise where I'm moving my elbows in front to block the punch. I'm over-exaggerating a little bit to get this full range of motion both ways. Twist and twist. Do not bend over. This is no good. Keep yourself here. Now we switch to corner punching. Punch to one corner, punch to the other. Or wall, whichever one you want to think of. But I'm turning my feet. Rotating my fist down at the last second and popping those punches out. Again, it may look like it, but my fist is relaxed, even though it's closed. Don't tighten up your hand and turn in your waist. One, two. Keep it going, engage the core. Now we dip down, uppercut. Rope working down the lower body and the legs, swinging up, and uppercut same way. Most of my other videos where I talk about the uppercut, it's important to make sure you're not swinging wild with the uppercut. This is Hollywood, it's not what we're doing. This is proper uppercut. Don't bring the hand down below the cheek or else you're gonna be getting smacked. Bring those hands up and rotate. Keep it going. Now, working on the hands up, last minute, we're gonna do two bells. One, two, and three, or jab, cross, hook combination. This is really important to work on the hip and shoulder rotation and develop all of those fundamental mechanics. So when we're going through this, make sure, as you guys continue, the whole body is churning. I'm engaging all those little parts we were just talking about. In the beginning with the three warm-ups. Jab, cross, and hook. Jab, cross, hook. Keep moving around a little bit. Right now I'm in my Muay Thai stance. Working my rhythm. Not going fast. Just staying relaxed. Breathing out when I punch. And relax. So from here, the next round, as I explained, go ahead and just kind of keep it warmed up. We're going to talk about getting into the push-ups. So our push-ups, we're going to start up by holding the push-up position and working on tapping. Next round is going to be another exercise. We're going to hop back up and work the one, two, three combination. We're going to go back down to the push-up position after 30 seconds and switch between the body weight and the combination, if that makes sense. So you guys get away with what I mean when we hop right into it. So we're going to start off with the push-up position. Here, we're going to tap shoulder to shoulder. This is keeping the body like a table. Do not do this. This is no good. Make sure you're straight and tap. 
30 seconds. Rewind the video if you need to see it. Tapping my shoulders. Engage the core, back straight. When you hear the bell, pop up, stance. One, two, three, rhythm. One, two, three, rhythm. Remember, if you have trouble with the push-ups, it's okay to also do on your knees. Do your best though to try to keep the knees off the ground if you can. Just don't get lazy with it. But if you do have trouble with it and you're struggling, it's okay. We drop down, now we tap our hips. So from here, back and tap the hip. Remember, one hand is staying stable. Do not do this. Shoulders do not come up. They stay square. So just like this. Breathe. Tap. On the side. Remember on the bell, when you hear it, pop up, one, two, three. Rhythm. Just start feeling it by now. One, two, three. Remember to turn at the waist. When we throw these punches, the foot rotates out, and you're getting all that power to come through. Down. Now this time, your heel and hips can come up. We're going to walk back and tap the toe. Depending on your flexibility, or your foot, excuse me, toe taps or foot taps, you can just tap your knee, or if you can, try to tap your toes. Back up, down. Notice how I go flat, and then come up. I'm spreading my feet now for balance. Flat, and then come back up. Flat, come back up. Going back up. One, two, three. Shh. Rhythm. One, two, three. Rhythm. And keep it going. Last few seconds. So, as I explained, the next round, we're going to rest for 30 and then we're going to move into some of the, uh, the next exercise. So, keep that one, two, three going. So now, from here, we're going to work on give yourself a little bit of time to rest. Our third exercise, excuse me, going into it, we're going to go into push-up position. We're also going to change the combination now. Instead of, so every other round, instead of going one, two, and three, we're going to go one, three, and two, putting it together in a different way. So one, three, and two. So lead hand, lead hand, rear hand in this one. So I'm going to start off in the push-up position on the belt. You got that? We're going to work on inchworms. Again, depending on your flexibility, I'm going to walk back with my hands one at a time. Once you touch my toes, I walk back down, push up. Come back up. This is where you're starting to get real. Come back down, push up. 30 seconds, let's go. Bring it back, touch the toes. Walk back forward, push up. Try to get your chest as close as you can without touching to the ground. Then push up. And remember to breathe. Back up. One, three, two. Don't get over anxious on that one. Like I almost said at the last repetition. And eat the ground with your face. <laughs> Make sure you stay loose. Hands are high. Jab, hook, cross. This is one, three, two. The next one we go back down to a push up position. Hands down, one hand on your center line, the other one hand out, like this. If you have a medicine ball at home, you can do that too. Push up one, bring the hands out, push up two, and back and forth. This is going to be tough 30, let's keep it going. Again guys, I'm struggling through with you, so let's try to make a count. All these push ups, don't stop, this is only 30 seconds. And right now is the last few, work it out. Back up. One, three, two. Hands are high. One, three, two. Again. One, three, 
two. Shh, shh, shh. Hands are up. Push up position. This time we go burpee. Up, just like this. You can do the burpee with or without the push up. So I might come down, up, and touch. I'm gonna do it with the push up. You don't have to. Be straight. Stay engaged with the core. Listen up for the bell. A little bit faster. Try to keep it out. Hands up. One, three, two. This last 30 on this one. Keep those hands moving. Breathe. You get 30 seconds of rest. Hands up. Seconds. I'm going to ding the bell a little differently here. Between fast and slow, stack your bricks. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to start off slow. Get ready. Hands up. And stacking bricks. One punch at a time, left, right, left, right. When you guys hear the bell, this is my 50% speed or whatever. 30, 40. Fast 15. Shoot those hands out. Turn the shoulders. Work the rotation. Engage the core. Turn your body. This is coming from my stomach through these punches. And back to normal. Still engage the core. After this thing, we're gonna add one more thing. Keep it going. Do not make a tight fist on this one. Of course, at the end of your punch, Make a little bit of a soft snap, fast. Breathe, tuck the chin. 15 seconds of this one, that's it, and back to normal. I'm gonna call out duck. Anytime you hear me guys say duck for the last two minutes, duck, hands come up to the forehead, and then go right back in. Duck, come right back in. One more time, duck, and fast. Shoot those hands out. Duck, back into it right away. And ready, duck. Duck, duck, and slow. Breathe, one, two, one, two. Good, moderate pace. Relax the hands, turn the shoulders. Right now, we're not thinking about punching something. This is getting the core into it fast. Shoot those hands out, duck. Shh, duck. Shh. Shoot fast, duck. Shh. Bring those hands up back to the cheek, no looping. Bring it straight back to your bar. And back to slow. Got one more, breathe. Hands up. Shh. Shh. Duck. Shh. Duck. Shh. Always hands come back to the face. Duck. Go. Shoot those hands out. Bring those hands out. Duck. And back to normal. Breathe. We're in the last thing. One more time. Give it your all. I'm getting hooked up. Keep it going. Ready? Go. Shoot them out fast. Up. Up. Last few seconds, just shoot them out. Awesome. Catch the breath. 
Let's go into it. So now, the next part of the video, I want to give you guys some of the technical details for when we throw punches, the way I like to visualize when I'm throwing a punch, and just in general, some of the fundamental focuses that I have when I'm going through these motions to kind of get the most out of the power and consistency in every single punch. As you know, in the training of martial arts, the different classes and everything, punching does not just come from the arm. If you punch from the arm, you're only as strong as this, right? From here to here. And it's important to know, just like we're thinking about, you get behind a truck and you're trying to push a car that's battery is dead, you put it in neutral and you try to push. Do you just push with your arms? No, right? Unless you're you know, a strong man who's 350 pounds and you're trying to muscle through it, then maybe you can do it, right? But you'll feel extreme fatigue and your arms will start giving out on you. It's no different from a punch. When we're throwing the punch, if we don't have our body, our stance, understanding how to rotate the, the, uh, all the little groups, muscle groups, and how to apply the punch to the whole body, you're missing the point. You're missing all the fundamental details and power that you, that you can get just from using really three different things. So what I want to talk about today are two things. The, or excuse me, three things. So the jab, the cross, and the hook. And I have a little bit of an assignment for those guys who want to do it just for fun and play around with whatever combination you want to throw. Whenever I throw my jab, and this is where I'm working through, if I'm in my basic stance, let's say more Muay Thai right now, I feel a little bit closer together and in my rhythm, I'm going from here. I throw that punch, now with just the arm, hip, shoulder, and even my stance, and rotating with my feet so the weight sinks forward, and I'm thinking about every single detail. So if you've watched my visualization uh, video, this is how I would personally break down my jab and kind of work through it. So we have my hand stays up, I'm in a good solid stance, when I throw that punch, I launch my shoulder and hips in, and my core is activated, just like we did the first exercises, rotating the body. I'm just condensing it down to the point where I can feel all those little muscle groups move as minimally as possible, but as efficiently as possible to deliver that punch out and come right back into my stance. There's never a stop and go. It's fluid the whole way, and then we're always back into a soft rhythm, especially if it's Muay Thai. No more different from boxing. You can run down here. I'm throwing that jab. It should be I'm just in my stance. And there's no effort behind it. This comes from the body repetition. So my hands are up. When we throw that punch, I'm here. One. 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 We come back. Right now, there's no power behind it. I'm just focusing on the fundamentals. It's hard to see. It's more something you need to feel and get taught with an instructor being there with you to watch what your body's doing and even physically pulling you to a certain way to help you understand how to do it. But I'll try my best to explain it through the camera so to make it obvious as possible. Something a little bit more uh, you can see clearer is when I throw my right straight. There's three things that we focus on and kind of the alignment is the last thing I want to talk about. But I always think of my foot, the ball of the foot, my knee, my hip, and my shoulder. So my whole body twisting like as I'm shutting a door throwing that straight right and closing off that door with my knee. So everything on this right side of my body turns on that right straight to both sink into my front foot, but also really get all that power from the back side. Again, if you notice, my shoulder and hip come first and then my arm comes out. And this is where I really launch it out and then come right back. Now remember, as always, when we throw a punch, since there's a lot of power behind this, don't be super loosey-goosey with your arm. If you throw so hard that you hyperextend your elbow, that's no good. Always stop about 98, 99% on your punch to make sure that never happens. So even if you miss a strike, you can always recover quickly. So as we're going through this, boom, rotate. Boom, rotate. Boom, rotate, and come back. The hook, no different. Same thing, ball of the foot, where the knee points, my hip, my shoulder, I'm working on that proper structure. I'm rotating through and I'm sinking my weight now onto this back leg. This alignment and this kind of push, and I'll actually come back to the cross in a minute here because I didn't miss a detail. I want you guys to see how I'm really rotating the whole body and opening it out my left side. And the hook, a popular misconception, is that if you throw the hook like this and you really swing wide, you can haymaker it, but again, it's using your arm. Look, watch my body. When I'm throwing the hook, it comes up, and all I'm doing when I'm rotating 
It's just twisting my whole left side of my body, and this one stops right here. Since I'm looking at my opponent or my target, if I turn my whole body, my head doesn't move, I'm just sitting here, this is how I deliver that punch. So when I come up and I hold it, I point my fist, rotate through. There's a lot of arguments you can do it both ways, palm in or palm down. I just use them both interchangeably. Practice right now whatever feels comfortable. Just don't practice your hook leg. Like this. <laughs> or something. Make sure you're making a good solid fist. Building a good muscle memory. Covering yourself. And throwing it from here. Now, as we're going through these different mechanics, there's a lot more detail to this, but I want to keep the video short. These are the things you want to be thinking about, especially when we start going through harder exercises or more um, uh, where your body gets fatigued. Because when you're tired, body is only going to, you're, you never, in training, you never fall to the level of your expectation. You fall back to the level of your training. So we train 110%. You put good muscle memory in every single time you're in class, or you do the exercises here now, you're really giving your all. And guess what's going to come out if you ever, hopefully you never need to, but you reuse it. Or let's say you're competing and sparring. Those are the things that's coming out. You're learning how to push yourself with that heart and that, that drive. And those are the things that build a good fiber or just a great uh, practitioner that needs to use this under pressure. So this is really important to know. And you know, we push ourselves in class and do a lot of cardio and exercises to get to that point because we want to be comfortable in the uncomfortable situations. So that way we can always be prepared for whatever we need to be prepared for. Right? So um, awesome job, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you guys do, leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Oh, and also like and subscribe, it also helps us school out a lot. And these videos will get them out um, as much as we can for you guys, especially during these trying times. So stay at home, be safe, uh, stay healthy, be well, and uh, look out for the next video coming out very soon. We hope to see everybody back in class in just a little bit here. Thank you.